Welcome to the Alpine seed stage of Agora European Green Deal. We are at 2334 meters above sea level in Innsbruck, Austria. You are watching part one of our celebration of soil, seeds and senses. This is an official side event of the first new European Bauhaus Festival. And it is my great pleasure to focus today on the question of soil as a hidden champion in Europe's green transition. I have here wonderful guests on stage, soil ecologist Julia Seber, biologist Johannes Kostenzer and landscape planner Christian Steiner. Thank you for being with us. Now, Julia, you are a soil ecologist. You are a senior researcher at EURAC, the European Academy in Bolzano, Italy, but also a senior lecturer at Innsbruck University. And 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci complained that humans would know more about the moving of celestial bodies than they would know about what's moving in the soil under their feet. And when I see you nodding at this, I wonder what have we humans overlooked? What is the secret of soil? Well, let me tell you this, mountain soils are special. We here in the mountain regions, we need the soils to filter, for example, our drinking water. And it's not only important for us here in the mountain region, but also for people living beyond the mountain regions. And what probably nobody or almost nobody knows is that it takes a hundreds of years for one centimeter of soil to develop up here. It's really a long, long time. But on the other hand, it is destroyed in a few seconds. I'm a soil ecologist, which means that I see soil as a habitat for a myriad of soil organisms. I don't know, probably you haven't known that a quarter of the earth soil, by, or let's say the, of earth biodiversity lives in the soil, which is a huge amount. And, and you also told us that we often think of rainforests, but actually yes. the number one biodiversity resource is the ocean followed by soil. And exactly. Only so it's the number one terrestrial habitat with the highest diversity. And all these soil organisms, they work for us. It's about 95% of our daily meals that depend on soil. It's a huge amount, nobody knows this. So 95% of our meals come really from the soil. Worldwide. Worldwide. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. So what is also very interesting is that, or let's say it's an important fact also what soil organisms do for us. They incorporate carbon into the soil. We know climate change, CO2 in the atmosphere, and we really, really need to maintain this huge reservoir that is in the soil of the carbon. Actually, it's more soil, uh, carbon in the soil than in the vegetation. Who knows that? So that means that soil actually absorbs CO2? Yes, it, um, soil is like a big, big reservoir. It maintains the carbon for a long time and it should keep there. We should really try to focus on having all the carbon in the soil instead of in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And we know that climate warming leads to decomposition, also that permafrost soils are melting, and that makes a huge problem. So because when the permafrost is defreezing, the soil unleashes the yes. CO2 back into the atmosphere? Right. Well, thank you for opening that uh, window to a whole new world to us. Now, uh, Johannes, you also focus on uh, nature, on soil and the environment along the Alpine Arc. You are the environmental ombudsman of Tyrol, and you're also a commission member on communication and education with the IUCN. Uh, it's the International uh, Nature Conservation Union which we can imagine like a thematic United Nations on nature protection issues. Tell us, how do you see this issue? Why in the whole sort of climate action story do we hear so little about soil action? Hmm. Well, 
let me take our audience to this uh, special place here at the more than 2,000 meters altitude at the barren mountain peak where we can get an idea when we look outside. Today we have the clouds, but when we look outside, we see that soil is rare in mountain reaches. We could see to Italy and Switzerland, Germany beyond us and Eastern Austria. Soil is the result of the primeval sea Thetis. Over hundreds of thousands of years, the Alps were folding up and over thousands of years, soil developed. It is a rare and precious good. It is the basis for our agriculture, for the beauty of the alpine landscape and for a tremendous biodiversity. With an excavator, as you said, Julia, uh, with an excavator, the soil structure and vegetation, which developed over thousands of years, can be destroyed within minutes. It's gone forever. Soil that is sealed is dead and lost. So it's basically a non-renewable resource. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how do you come in here as an environmental ombudsman? How do you work? We lend the voice to nature and natural habitats in planning and permission proce processes. We carefully assess local ecosystems and we bring our voice to legal and administrative processes. I think environmental ombuds offices can serve as a role model for other countries because we give common goods uh, like uh, uh, landscape, um, soil health or biodiversity, a legal and legitimate voice. And these common goods are key assets for the European Green Deal. That's interesting. So the Environmental Ombudsman as an institutional innovation or good practice at regional level. Thank you, Johannes. You also mentioned a really interesting uh, term here that brings us to Christian, the common uh, good. Christian uh, Steiner, you are a landscape planner and you had the Department of Rural Development in Lower Austria and you also chair the board of the European Land and Soil Alliance, which is uh, a, an association of cities and municipalities from nine different countries. And you see the conflicts of interests on soil every day for more than three decades in your work. And you often suggest that soil functions are so vital that we should consider them as common goods. What are the challenges in soil protection and in getting us to a whole new view and dealing with soil and soil functions? Uh, first of all, I would like to repeat and uh, say again, uh, soil is precious. Soil is a, a valuable and limited resource. We have to consider that uh, soil is uh, as the living interface between vegetation cover and the uh, geological subsurface, uh, it is the skin of our planet. And compared to the uh, skin of uh, the human body, the soil layer is much uh, more thinner and more uh, uh, valuable than other things. Uh, again, soil is a limited resource and it is not uh, renewable during uh, a few uh, human generations. Uh, let's consider that the formation, as already mentioned, of one uh, centimeter of uh, new fertile soil takes 100 to 300 years. And we, will, we lose all this valuable soil when we seal it, for instance. And that's, uh, that brings me to our activities with our municipalities and, and cities, and especially in the mountainous regions. Uh, uh, another challenge for, mountain, for soils in mountain regions is climate change, which is progressing uh, more rapidly than in other regions. It's more visible than in other regions. Uh, that is why we have to uh, deal uh, with soil very carefully. Uh, soil offers 
a, a huge uh, variety of, we call it ecosystem services, which are important for human life, for plant life, for animal life. Uh, we have a, a, a broad abundance and, um, of soil life, which is uh, fairly unknown. And we should take this into account. Uh, one uh, hand of, of fertile soil contains uh, more living organisms than there are humans uh, living on Earth. So that uh, is uh, an aspect we have to communicate to our partners in our daily work, uh, to the broad public, but especially to politicians, to stakeholders, and to the uh, cities and municipalities on the local and regional level. But it still seems that um, for sort of lay people and normal citizens, this big epic battle uh, for the soil is still being carried out somehow in the shade of other political processes. We don't hear very much about the conflicts of interest that we see every day in soil and soil protection. Now, if soil is so vital and so precious, um, what, what are the different uh, interests that different stakeholders are now still looking at when they talk about soil and why is soil protection so a little as uh, such a little known issue uh, let me compare it with uh, the other resources air and and water for instance mm -hmm. uh, usually soil is not visible and i think that's one of the uh, important aspects uh, we have to make it visible uh, and that's our big challenge how to deal with this uh, uh, topic um, especially in last years um, we have a, a, a new challenges uh, concerning soil resources. Uh, interests of use are progressing. For instance, the production of, of food, feed and fiber, the production of un renewable energy. We have construction activities. Uh, we have uh, infrastructure fa facilities, uh, recreational and tourism aspects, water retention, nature protection interests. All these in different interests are focusing on soil and soil is limited and not renewable. Thank you so much, Christian. Let me come back to you, uh, Julia. You're now taking part in a really exciting uh, global new project because for the first time ever, a thousand samples of soil are collected and compared from around the world. What are your hopes for the outcomes and insights from this project? Tell us more about it. Yeah, that's uh, SoilBon, which mm -hmm. is short for Soil Biodiversity Obser Observation Network. And it's a really huge project. And I think it's one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, because by using a comparable standardized protocol, we can use then the data to really, really understand soil biodiversity on a global level. This is rather new and I think after this project we will know a lot more about soil and soil biodiversity. I would hope that from the scientific point of view uh, it will help us to understand the connections also between the different soil communities and the different stages of soil fauna and uh, different sizes that exist in soil animals. And for us, not only the scientific point of view is really important, but also if we really make it to the public, if we can share our data with the citizens, I think we can really, really uh, raise the awareness of the sensitivity of soils, not only mountain soils, because I will be part of the mountain soil uh, team, but I think all soils. So you tell us that this will be the first global map on soil? Yes, well, there exist some global maps on specific taxa, but this is the most comprehensive uh, project ever. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, it's about to start, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited mm -hmm. that I will be sampling my sites. How many samples will you hand in there? Oh, yes, well, we have six sites, mm -hmm. which means quite a lot because every site has five samples per taxon mm -hmm. or taxonomic unit, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And it will co be quite an effort, but I think it's absolutely worth it. And this will take a number of years, I imagine. Um, we'll see, hopefully, 
it will be possible to not only do the very basic uh, first year, but because we know that long-term data tells us a lot about how climate change, for example, will impact soil biodiversity, we need really long-term data. And I hope this is now the foundation of that. Well, thank you very much, Julia Seber, Johannes Kostenser and Christian Steiner for opening uh, our eyes to the hidden champion for climate action and the green transition, the hidden champion that is right under our feet. This was part one of the celebration of soil, seeds and senses brought to you by Agora European Green Deal. Follow our YouTube channel and press on the notification button to get updated about our work. Oh,